All right, testing. I want to make sure everybody can hear me tonight. I want to make sure everybody watching right now can hear me tonight. So uh, if you can hear, uh, I want you on Facebook to tell me, uh, yes, you can hear me. If you are on Periscope, I want you to tell me, yes, you can hear me uh, because I, I need y'all to really hear um, um, what I got to say. Okay. So, uh, I see we are on Periscope. Uh, I see we are good here. Hopefully y'all can hear me testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, good. Okay. So, uh, um, we can hear on Periscope. Okay. So here's the deal y'all. So tonight, uh, I have planned on uh, being here at the house. I'm sitting here. I'm testing live streaming equipment. I'm working on stuff. I'm, I got to go to Cincinnati tomorrow to give a speech. I got to speak to the Prince George's County 100 black men on Saturday. And so I was going, you know, binge watch a couple of shows and just sort of mind my own business. But then one of my Twitter followers sent me tonight's segment on Laura Ingram's show on Fox News, where they were talking about Spike Lee's comments blasting Donald Trump in cons. Okay, so that's what, that's what they were doing. It was a seven minute and seven second segment. And Laura's guests were Kevin Johnson, you've seen him, black conservative. He's a Fox News contributor. And Leo Terrell, civil rights attorney. Okay, so those were his guests. So I'm watching this segment. And Laura, first of all, the reason I'm not playing you the clip because this is also on YouTube. Fox News may flag it, and so I might get docked. So I'm like, you know what? Don't worry about it. So go to my Facebook page. Go to my par go to my Twitter page. I posted the link. You can see the segment. So they start off the segment where Laura is upset because of the language that Spike Lee used, uh, calling Trump an MF. Leo Terrell responds by saying, "Really? You you get mad at Spike Lee when?" Donald Trump has used coarse language and curses. And then Laura realizing, well, that was a stupid way to start the segment off, goes, well, okay, well, let's not talk about that. No, you brought it up. And so Leo just simply hit her back on that one, okay? But this is the one that was a trip. Laura Ingram. Y'all, she actually took offense to Spike Lee saying, black people built America with free slave labor. Laura then says, I, I, I got to read this for y'all. I got to read it for you. It's just, just so you think I'm not, you know, making this thing up. Laura said, point blank, quote, let me find. She said, I'm telling y'all, to the, I'm still laughing about her statement. She said that America was founded on freedom. Yeah, she actually said that. Y'all, I'm seriously, y'all, she actually, she actually said that. America was founded on freedom. Really? Re re really? Freedom. No, this was the quote. America was built on this crazy idea of freedom. No law. America was literally built by slaves. Here's American history, Laura. 
America had no economy other than slavery. Slavery funded the southern economy and the northern economy. Funded. Yeah. 243 years of sanctioned, legalized slavery. That's what created the economic system in America. In fact, Gerald Horn argues that the colonies, that slavery was a significant part of the revolution because they feared the Brits were going to eventually abolish slavery. Book number one, Laura, you should read The Counter-Revolution of 1776, Slave Resistance and the Origins of the United States of America by Gerald Horn. He's a professor at the University of Houston. Feel free to book him so you can understand the history of slavery in America. Now, you actually said that as if people who look like me were free. So Laura, how can America be founded on freedom when black people were not free? That, that was the basis of Spike Lee's comment. So how can you deny what is factually correct? Another book for you. Let's see here. Hmm. Here's a book. Empire of Cotton by Swin Beckert. Empire of Cotton, A Global History. This book, Laura, look at the book. This book, and I've interviewed Swin on my TV One show, talks about how cotton became the dominant crop in the world and how America was able to become an economic superpower because it dominated cotton globally. How was that cotton picked? Who did it for free? Black people, which is what Spike Lee was talking about. Laura, Empire of Cotton. Well, maybe that's not good enough for you. Okay. I got another book for you, Laura Ingram. Since you, I mean, you have no understanding of American history. Okay. The half has never been told. Slavery and the Making of American Capitalism by Edward E. Baptist. I've also interviewed him. And in this book, Laura, he details how slavery is actually what established capitalism in America. You were talking about freedom? This book details how black people, people of African descent, actually cheap free labor is what gave America the economic power to be able to dominate the Industrial Revolution. Without slavery, without free labor, America cannot become the richest superpower in the world. Spike Lee was right, Laura. What the hell were you thinking? Okay, that's that book. Let's see, I'm not quite done yet. So, you talked about freedom. Really? Okay, how about this? <sighs> Bind us apart, how enlightened Americans invented racial segregation. Nicholas Guillet, I also interviewed him. And in this book, he talks about how individuals who were elites, yes, the rich in the country, Republicans and Democrats, didn't matter. They said, we're going to create the system called segregation. That's what this book says. So how could America be founded on freedom if the people who were driving the economic engine law were not free? Yes, bind us apart. Put him on your shelf but I'm not done yet. And as you see, Laura, I own all these books because see, I'm not clueless, all right? You want another one? How about this one? Great book here. This is called Rough Crossings, Britain, the Slaves, and the American Revolution by Simon Shama. 
haven't interviewed him, but I got the book. It details slavery and the Brits and the American Revolution. You said America was founded on freedom. How can America have been founded on freedom when the people in this book were not free who were black? No, Laura, America was founded for freedom for white people. America was founded as a country for rich white landowners. That's what America was. Oh, I'm sorry. You think I'm wrong? Okay, got another book for you. It's called Dark Bargain, Slavery, Profits, and the Struggle for the Constitution by Lawrence Goldstone. I've interviewed Lawrence as well, Laura. I own this book. Here's the piece in Dark Bargain. He details how the United States Constitution, how every major significant fight in the U.S. Constitution was driven by slavery. Yes, every single one. The Electoral College was a compromise. Guess what? A slavery compromise. He details in here how there was this constant fight, this battle between the South and the North in the creation of the United States Constitution over the issue of slavery. Oh, but let me help you all out. The black conservative on her show tonight, Kevin Jackson, a complete idiot. This is what he said when Leo brought all the three-fifth comp compromise. Kevin said this. The three-fifth compromise was to give humanhood to black people. A black man, a black man, a black man went on national television and actually told civil rights attorney Leo Terrell that he was wrong about the three-fifths compromise and that the three-fifths compromise was designed to give humanhood to black people. Kevin, you are beyond stupid. Do you not understand that the three-fifths compromise had nothing to do with humanhood? It was a compromise because the North in the creation of the Constitution did not want the South to have numerical advantage. So therefore, they counted slaves as three-fifths of a human for the purpose of delegates, for the purpose of the House and the Senate. That is what the three-fifths compromise was, Kevin. You actually were dumb enough to go on television, on Fox News, and say it was about, quote, to give humanhood to black people. And Laura, you didn't even have the common sense to correct him? We all learned that in basic history, in elementary school, middle school, high school, I assume y'all went to college. How do you not know that? Seriously. Do you know how basic that is? Three-fifths compromise. We all know that. And this fool actually said, I don't know, that's not what it was about. It was about to give black people humanhood. Okay, Kevin, explain this to me. How exactly did the three-fifths compromise get around him to giving black people humanhood? I'll wait. I'm still waiting. How? So the three-fifths compromise, if the three-fifths compromise, Kevin, gave black people humanhood, that was in 1787, right? Right? When is slavery in? 14th Amendment. When was it passed? Nearly 100 years later. Please tell me where the humanhood came from. 
เอาเว้ยเขาเลยเขาเลยเขาเลยเขาเลยเขาเลยเขาเลยเขาเลยเขาเลยเขาเลยเขาเลยเขาเลยเขาเ So Kevin, where, where was the humanhood in that? In law, you didn't even correct him. That's basic American history. Law, you said that America was founded on this crazy idea of freedom. Please explain to me, Dark Bargain. Please explain to me how the creation of the Constitution. Of the United States of America was driven by slavery, was driven by oppression, was driven by degradation, was driven by demeaning people of African descent. In fact, Laura, please tell me, I got the American flag behind me with black faces on it. Please tell me, please. The third stanza of the Star Spangled Banner. You know the song, that song when this is being raised. Please, please tell me if that third stanza was about freedom for people of African descent. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. The seminal book by W. B. Du Bois. It is called Black Reconstruction in America, 1860. To 1880. Now, even though Reconstruction is considered to be 10 to 12 years, for Du Bois, he laid it out over a period of 20 years. If America was founded on freedom, Laura, why was this necessary? The Reconstruction Amendments, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. If it was founded on freedom, why were they necessary? If it was founded on freedom, Laura. Why was the 1860 Civil Rights Act necessary? Please tell me. If it was founded on freedom, Laura, why this book by Charles Ogletree? Why this book? You know what it's called? All Deliberate Speed: Reflections uh, on the First Half Century of Brown v. Board of Education. That's what this book. Says this book right here. So it was founded on freedom. Why was the Supreme Court decision in 1954 overturned Plessy v. Ferguson in 1896? If America was founded on freedom, Laura, please explain to me the Dred Scott decision in 1857. Please, I'll wait. I'll wait. Please, it was founded on freedom. Lord, if America was founded on freedom, please explain this book, Slavery by Another Name, The Reenslavement of Black Americans from the Civil War to World War II by Douglas A. Blackman. If America was founded on freedom, Lord, please explain to me the Great Compromise of 1877, which put it in place Jim Crow. Which led to 92 years of slavery without shackles. If America was founded on this idea of freedom, how in the world can you even remotely say that if America was founded on this crazy idea of freedom, Laura, why was there the Double V campaign, victory at home and victory abroad? P please, why, why, why was, why, 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 what was the purpose of that campaign? Which is led by black newspapers. Yes, the Double V campaign. It was about defeating fascism and Jim Crow here in America. Please tell me, America was founded on freedom. Why was there a need for the black freedom movement? What was the purpose of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, the 1965 Voting Rights Act, 1968 Fair Housing Act, if America was founded on freedom? I, I, I just want to know that. See, this is my problem. 
See, Fox, y'all, y'all need to understand. Fox News won't call me. Fox News won't call me. Um, I did Megyn Kelly's show a few times only because when Bill, when they got rid of Roger Ailes, they told her, hey, what do you want? She said, oh, let's book Roland Martin. Fox News wouldn't have me on. I'm just letting y'all know. I'm not scared. I'd love to go on. I'd love to debate anybody. Tucker Carlson won't do it. Laura Ingram won't do it. Uh, none of them will do it. Sean Hannity damn sure won't do it. You see, what angers me is I don't mind you having people on the air who disagree with Spike Lee. That's fine with me. But don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie to your audience. And the person at home is going, hey, that's it. That actually happened. No, it was a lie. That's what bothers me. What bothers me is when you have people who go on and lie. Y'all say go on the five. The five won't invite me. Uh, that, that show outnumbered. They won't invite me. I'm telling you. I, I would love for the new CEO of Fox to say, yo, book them. See, I have no problem engaging in debate with anybody. Fox and Friends, any of them. I don't care. I'll debate any of them. But don't lie. And don't lie, Laura Ingram, to your audience. Laura Ingram, you owe your audience an apology on tomorrow's show for lying. America was founded on the subjugation and the oppression of people of African descent. That is an undeniable fact. People of African descent did not get to experience freedom the way white Americans did, Laura. It wasn't freedom for Native Americans either. It was freedom for rich white landowners, Laura. That's what Spike Lee was talking about. And when you lie to your audience and just give them something that is just factually incorrect, it's shameful. And Kevin Jackson, what kind of black man are you to actually say the three-fifth compromise gave black people humanhood? Are you outside of your mind? Folks, we need truth. We can debate opinions. We can debate other things. But what I cannot tolerate is to watch television or listen to radio and hear people just flat out lie and make stuff up and let it slide as if everything is good, as if everything is just fine, no, no issues. We're, we're perfectly, it's all gravy. It's not. So, Laura, if you would actually like real American history, call a brother. And are you afraid to call me? Book Gerald Horn from the University of Houston. If you're afraid to call me, book Dr. Greg Carr from Howard University. They can instruct you on actual American history. Please, if you want to book them, book Douglas Blackman. If you don't want to book them, please, by all means. Book Lawrence Goldstone, the book is Dark Bargain. If you don't want to book him, please book Rough Crossings, uh, Simon Shama, Britain, the Slaves, and the American Revolution. If you don't want to book Simon, please book Nicholas. The book is Buying Us Apart, How Enlightened Americans Invented Racial Segregation. If you don't want to book him, please uh, go ahead and book uh, Edward Baptist, who did the book, The Half Has Never Been Told, Slavery and the Making of American Capitalism. And if you don't want to book him, go outside of the country and please book Sven Beckert, Empire of Cotton and A Global History. It's not that hard to read. It's not that hard to learn. It's not that hard to study. But just do me a favor. Don't make shit up. Because that's an abomination. Just like slavery was. Not freedom for us, Laura. It was oppression for 200 years. In 43 years and we still endured the hatred 
through the period of Reconstruction. And then we endured it again for another 92 years with Jim Crow being put in place with the Great Compromise of 1877. The reality, Laura, is for 351 years of American history, black people were not free. We became technically fully free Americans in 1970, after the Civil Rights Act, after the Voting Rights Act, after the Fair Housing Act. Yeah, Laura, that's American history. At least fake reading something factual. And Kevin, you're an embarrassment as a black man who doesn't even know the three-fifths compromise. My 14-year-old nieces know about the three-fifths compromise. But I guess that's what gets you paid today as a black conservative on television. Folks, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Roland S. Martin. Please share this video with all of your friends so people can actually learn true American history and how it impacts us present day. Follow me on Facebook as well. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. We got about 141,000 subscribers. I want us to hit 200,000. Thank you so very much. I got to go. Class is no longer in session.